Welcome to the DevOps Library. As always, we're glad you found yourself here. This is Samantha, and in this episode, we're going to get to the second half of the open source Jenkins plugins on the CCJPE. First up, let's knock out all of the notification plugins. The IRC, Jabber, Skype, and Slack plugins are all very similar in that they add build notifications to Jenkins for their respective chat clients. While the Slack plugin isn't on the exam, it's our favorite here at the DevOps Library, so we're going to use it to demonstrate how these plugins work. First, we need to go to Manage Jenkins, followed by Configure System. Next, we just need to provide our team domain, an integration token generated from the Slack website, the channel we'd like Jenkins to post to, and the URL of our build server. Now let's take a look at how to configure a job to send build notifications to Slack. It's actually very easy. The only thing we have to add is a post build action for Slack notifications. Let's go ahead and add that now, then specify what events we'd like to be notified about. All right, done. Let's go ahead and run the job. We should see an alert in Slack almost immediately. There we go. Well, you won't want to use this plugin for every job. It's very handy for notifying build teams when a job is completed or an operations team when a deployment has finished. Okay, next up, we have the JUnit plugin. If you're not familiar with JUnit, it's an open source tool used for unit testing. While JUnit is used specifically for Java, many other testing platforms are also able to output in the JUnit XML format. This plugin adds a post build action that parses the XML and provides an easy way to interpret the testing results within Jenkins. Let's go ahead and take a look at our JUnit demo job. On the right, we can see how our tests have been trending, and we can even view individual test results by clicking on one of the builds. Another feature that the JUnit plugin adds is the ability for Jenkins to display yellow status balls, which are used to represent unstable builds. An unstable build is one that runs successfully, but fails one or more tests. All right, now on to the Matrix Project plugin. This plugin adds an entirely new type of job called a multi-configuration project. Imagine you need to create a bunch of different jobs that all do almost the same thing, with only slightly different parameters. One option would be to create several different freestyle jobs, or you could simply create one multi-configuration job. Let's take a look at an example. We'll pretend that we have a web app that we'd like to test in multiple environments on a variety of web browsers. To do that, we created two axes, one for browser type and another with each of our environments listed. Then for our build step, we just created a simple echo statement to demonstrate how a multi-configuration job works. Let's build the job. Normally, each build would only have a single status of success or failure. But for this job, we have 25 status balls, one for each build that Jenkins generated. Let's go ahead and click one of them, then view the console output. I'll go with QA testing on Chrome. See, we were able to try every possible combination of environment and browser all from a single job. It's really pretty cool, isn't it? For the exam, remember that the matrix project adds the multi-configuration project job type. And also, make sure you understand how many builds a multi-configuration project creates. Don't worry, it's pretty easy to remember. Just take the number of items on each axis and multiply them together. If we have one axis with five items and another axis with three items, how many builds will Jenkins create? 15. It's pretty easy, isn't it? Okay, next up we have the node label parameter plugin. This plugin adds two build parameters, both of which can be used to specify where a build should run. Let's go ahead and try it out. Create a new freestyle job, then on the job configuration page select this build is parameterized. Next, click Add parameter and select either node or label depending on whether you'd like the user to select a node from a drop down list or specify a label that targets one or more nodes. For the name, put whatever you'd like. Just make sure it's clear for the user. At this point, you can select all to make all Jenkins slaves available as options, or you can configure the job to only allow a specific group of nodes to be chosen. As we currently only have our master node, We'll leave it with the defaults and save the job. Now click Build with Parameters. All right, there we go. See? Anyone that runs the job can now select which node to use for the build. If you're wondering when you might want to use this, imagine having a job that deploys a web application. With the Node Label Parameter plugin, 
we can now select which web server to deploy the application to. Overall, it's a pretty simple but very useful plugin. Okay, now on to the Parameterized Trigger plugin. This plugin is used for triggering another build job from a parameterized build job. By default, Jenkins has the ability to trigger other jobs as part of a build step or a post build action. However, this plugin adds the ability to pass parameters from the upstream job to the downstream one that's being triggered. If you're wondering when you'd want to do this, let's imagine we have a parameterized job for selecting an application to deploy. We also have a QA job that requires the name of an application in order to know which tests to run. By using the Parameterized Trigger plugin, we can automatically trigger the QA job at the end of the deployment job, with all of the parameters passed in. Please note, on the Jenkins CCJPE exam, do not confuse the Parameterized Trigger plugin with the Parameterized Remote Trigger plugin. The Parameterized Remote Trigger plugin is used to trigger builds on remote Jenkins Masters. While it's not listed on the study guide, do not be surprised if a question comes up asking about it. Next up, we have the Promoted Builds plugin. If you're following along in the study guide, you might be wondering why we skipped the Pipeline plugin. Well, the reason is we're planning on devoting an entire lesson to using it, as it makes up a sizable portion of the exam, and we want to make sure we spend enough time covering it. Anyway, Back to the Promoted Builds plugin. This plugin adds the concept of promotion to Jenkins. A promoted build is a successful build that's passed additional extra criteria, such as downstream automated testing or even manual promotion. You can even have multiple levels of promotion, such as requiring a build to be promoted by a dev, QA, and DBA before it can be deployed to production. For the exam, don't worry so much about knowing every detail about promoting builds. Just remember that it's useful for setting builds apart that have met additional criteria. Okay, now it's time for the Radiator plugin. This plugin is used for creating radiator views. These are perfect for displaying on a large screen next to development teams as it makes it very easy to see if any jobs are failing. We do have two radiator views configured, so let's take a look at them. The first displays what you'll see if no builds are failing, while we've added a failing job to the second view. As you can see, it's very clear when something is having a problem, and that's the benefit of using this plugin. One of the things you'll want to remember for the exam is that a radiator is not used to display a lot of information about each build or job. It's only used for displaying success or failure. Next up, we have the SMS notification plugin. This plugin adds a post build action for sending out notifications via SMS text messages. While some teams may find this useful, we find that using something like PagerDuty or VictorOps works much better for notifying team members about something urgent. All right, now we're on to the last plugin of our lesson, the Script Security plugin. This plugin can be very useful for large Jenkins environments if you allow users to create their own jobs. Let's start out by imagining a scenario where everyone has full administrator access in Jenkins. One user decides to make a job, and as part of a build step decides to add rm-rf slash. Assuming the job is kicked off on a Linux node, that user just successfully destroyed one of our slaves, or possibly even the master if that's where the job is built. Now let's imagine a much happier scenario, this time with the script security plugin enabled and only our trusted users are admins. Once again, our problem user tries to create a job with a destructive build step. This time, though, the script can't run until an administrator approves the script. If the script is approved, it'll be added to a pre-approved list so that other users can use it immediately. But this time, one of our admins rejects it, preventing anything bad from happening. The script security plugin also adds a feature called Groovy Sandboxing. While this isn't too helpful for our shell and PowerShell scripts, it does provide a limited execution environment for users to safely execute whatever groovy code they'd like, provided the commands they'd like to use are whitelisted. Overall, it just depends on your environment and what level of access you want to provide your users. Okay, well, we finally finished covering all of the open source Jenkins plugins, with the exception of the Pipeline plugin. But don't worry, we'll cover that soon. Thanks as always for watching. We truly appreciate your support. And if you like our videos, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel or following us at the DevOps Library on Twitter. Please consider supporting us at patreon.com slash DevOps Library. We love making these videos for you for free, and we want to continue doing that. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you again soon.